so the next topic is your last section of your module one that is your oscillator okay so what is meant by an oscillator okay what is the difference between an amplifier and oscillator so what is meant by an oscillator is oscillator is the device which generates okay generates the output either sine wave or it can be sinusoidal wave or non sinusoidal wave without any input signal without any input signal okay so this is called as oscillator whereas in the case of amplifier we have given an input signal and we have amplified that input signal at the output but in the case of oscillator you are not going to provide any input signal we are going to use only the dc power supply and we are going to generate sinusoidal or non sinusoidal signal okay so this is called as oscillator so under oscillator oscillators will always be using positive feedback whereas your um, amplifiers will be using negative feedback the first topic what you are going to study in oscillator is your positive feedback okay so what is meant by pos uh, positive feedback if the out portion of the output right portion of the output is fed back to the input such that the overall input increases so if this is your v in and this is your vs vf will be such that the overall input increases or reinforces the input then it is called as positive feedback so v in will be equal to vs plus vf right now if i draw the voltage series feedback circuit now we'll be finding out the overall gain okay let us uh, consider an amplifier with an voltage gain av and what will be this circuit this will be your feedback network with what is your gain beta just similar to that of your negative feedback we are going to derive the equation okay so this will be your v out this will be your input to your amplifier v in okay so since it is voltage series this is going to be your input will be series connection and the output will be parallel connection a portion of the output will be fed back to the input so let me consider this voltage as your feedback voltage vf so what will be your vf vf will be equal to beta into v not let me write it here vf will be equal to beta into v not so this is your source voltage let me take it as v in okay so now what will be the overall gain so the overall gain let me take it as g that is overall gain means with feedback okay so you know that gain is equal to output divided by input so what will be your output v out with feedback means the input is vs okay so let me take this as equation 1 so now you are going to find out the value for v out and vs and you will be substituting in g and you will find out the uh, value of the overall gain g so let us consider what is your v out so what is your output of an amplifier with uh, input as your Uh, uh input of your amplifier v out is equal to av into v in right av into v in okay so let me take this as equation 2 okay now we have got what is v out now we want vs so we can take from this equation v in is equal to here it is plus here it is plus right so v in is equal to vs plus vf from this can we find out vs vs is equal to v in minus vf let us take this as equation 3 now we have got v out we have got vs can we substitute in equation 1 substituting 2 and 3 in equation 1 what will be your value of g g is equal to v out is equal to av into v in divided by vs vs is equal to v in minus vf now you are going to substitute the value for vf so what is your vf av into v in divided by v in into minus vf is equal to beta into v not so vf is equal to beta into v not v not or your v out okay v out right now can we again substitute the value for v out okay so g is equal to av into v in 
divided by v in minus beta into again you are going to substitute the same formula v out a v into v in can i bring this v in down so a v divided by v in by v in 1 right minus beta into a v v in v in get cancelled so you will be getting beta into a v so what will be the formula the overall gain which is equal to a v into 1 minus beta into a v whereas in the case of negative feedback we got the overall gain is equal to a v divided by 1 plus beta into a v so this is very important positive feedback uh, overall gain formula okay so this is your first topic the second topic so in this uh, you, uh, in this section you are going to study only the basic concepts working principle and the waveforms okay so you know that oscillators utilize positive feedback now you have seen what is meant by positive feedback now we are going to learn what is uh, the second topic that is called as condition for oscillation Condi condition for oscillation so what is meant by oscillation oscillation means oscillation means high low okay it can be periodic non -peria periodic it can be sinusoidal it can be non sinusoidal sinusoidal is the signal and non sinusoidal means it can be a square wave also which will be oscillating okay so we want a sustained oscillation for oscillator right so what is the application of this oscillator oscillator is used in uh, mobiles laptops then a function generator for the generation of a clock signal right square wave or a sinusoidal wave so uh, we want a, a constant amplitude signal so how can we achieve a constant amplitude signal for example if you throw a ball after some time uh, uh, the f ball will become stationary right so it's called as damping so the ball as the time period long uh, time period increases the ball will get stationary and the signal will get damped right so we want a sustained oscillation constant amplitude oscillation only then it can be used as a oscillator okay so there are mainly very very important two conditions for oscillation first condition is the total phase shift total phase shift should be equal to 0 or 360 degree okay so the closed loop phase shift so what is your uh, phase shift here you have the amplifier here feedback so the total phase shift should be equal to 0 or 360 degree so this is your first rule and the second rule is uh, condition is your loop gain what is meant by loop gain we have seen your uh, in the previous video right loop gain or i can tell the magnitude of the loop gain should be always equal to one that is the av your uh, amplifier gain and the feedback gain multiplication of your uh, amplifier gain and your feedback gain is called as your loop gain should be always equal to one for sustained oscillation this conditions is also called by another name it is called as Burkhausen criteria okay so condition for oscillation okay so these are the two conditions suppose if if a beta is less than one then what will be your uh, equation if a beta is less than one if a beta is greater than one a beta is equal to one magnitude if a beta is less than one so you will be getting amplitude will be high as the time progresses it, your signal will get damped that will, this will be your result of uh, of your signal if your a beta is less than one if a beta is greater than one your signal in the initial it will be damped and the amplitude goes on increasing the stability will not be there right so you your amplitude keeps on increasing instability now if a beta is equal to one then you will be getting a sustained oscillation okay so this is your condition for your uh, oscillation okay so next topic what you are going to study is the different types of oscillator so based on the uh, components used whether it is resistors or uh, capacitors or inductors you can classify uh, 
the uh, oscillator into uh, different types okay so as per your syllabus you are going to study the two type of rc oscillators so you are going to study two types one is your ladder network or it is called as rc phase shift oscillator and the second one is called as your wing bridge oscillator okay only the general working principle is necessary oscillator so what is meant by rc phase shift oscillator so in both the cases you are going to use the res uh, resistor and capacitors okay here also rc phase shift also you are going to use uh, resistor capacitors and wayne bridge oscillator also you are using resistors and capacitors as your components okay so uh, let me take an example of your rc phase shift using bjt okay so what will be your diagram of your bjt so you have your normal amplifier diagram okay so you have your stability resistor re ce across the collector you are giving your resistor rc again you have in your input the voltage divided by sing r1 and r2 right so across the input and the output you have your coupling capacitor okay now this is going to be your vcc <clears throat> so this is your circuit of your amplifier right r1 r2 this is grounded so this will be your amplifier circuit now what is how will you form an oscillator A positive feedback so you are going to connect the output and the input you are going to give a feedback network okay so in the case of rc phase shift you are going to give a ladder network that is three pairs of capacitors and resistors okay that's why it is called as a ladder network so this will be your rc network so this is going to be your feedback network okay so this is your amplifier and this is going to be your feedback network okay clear with this diagram so this is bjt n p n so we have seen in the uh, previous video working of an rc coupled uh, multi stage right single stage is just similar with only a one stage so what is the use of this r1 and r2 r1 and r2 is used for pro giving proper biasing so voltage divider circuit which gives a proper biasing so that the amplifier will be in the properly in the which stage active region right so rc is your uh, collector um, resistor r e and c e gives the stability of the circuit okay stability okay now what is happening you you want the total phase shift of 180 degree so what will happen your amplifier since it's the ce amplifier it will give a phase shift of 180 degree so your feedback will give a phase shift of 180 degree how so a single rc will give a phase shift of 60 degree the values of r and c are selected such that a single stage give 60 degree so here 60 second stage 60 third stage 60 so totally you will be getting a, a <coughs> phase shift of 180 degree from the feedback network so 180 plus 180 you will be getting 360 degree so the first condition sorry the second um, yeah uh, the total phase shift is 360 degree the first condition will be satisfied okay now what uh, what is your uh, second condition second condition is your loop gain should be equal to 1 always your loop gain should be equal to 1 now the frequency of oscillation is given by 1 by 2 pi rc into root 6 okay derivation is not necessary okay now first condition is satisfied now you are going to see the second condition now this feedback network beta feedback network will be having the Uh, gain as one by twenty nine. Okay, magnitude of gain will be equal to one by twenty nine. So what should be your loop gain? A beta should be equal to one. If beta is equal to one by twenty nine, then minimum value of A should be equal to twenty nine. Only then 
you will be getting the value as 1. So I can tell that the magnitude of A should be greater than or equal to 29 for sustained oscillation. Okay. So this is your working principle of your RC phase shift or your ladder network oscillator. Okay. The next type what you are going to see is your main bridge oscillator. So similar to that of your, so your output will be, you will be getting what will be the signal at the output. Output will be a, will be getting a constant amplitude signal, V out. Okay. So these two types, RC phase shift oscillator and main bridge oscillator are called a sinusoidal oscillator. Oscillator. There may be one more question which I have, uh, uh, I forgot to explain, right. Here you have only DC supply. You are not applying any input signal V in. Then how did you get your output as sinusoidal signal? That is the question, right. So what happens? You don't, in amplifier you have given an input. Here in this case there is no sine wave which is given. But output you are getting a sine wave. What is the reason? So this, uh, you have only a DC signal VCC, but there will be due to circuit uh, uh, component imbalance, there may be a small noise signal present, okay. That noise will be amplified by your amplifier. So the noise signal is the signal which gives you the sine wave structure, okay. This case applies for all the oscillator. You don't have an external input applied, the internal noise will be amplified by the amplifier and you will be getting the oscillations by the use of the positive feedback okay so next one is called as your vein bridge oscillator so uh, vein bridge oscillator is another type of oscillator which uses the same uh, components that is your resistors and your capacitor so your structure you have only one structure to study okay you have a series RC, let me take it as C1, R1 and you have a parallel RC, R2, C2, then you have two series resistor R3 and R4 connected together. So if I take this as A, B, C and D, now A, B is going to be your input, okay, node A and node B will be your input. This is your bridge circuit, uh, circuit okay. Main bridge oscillator or your feedback network. Now and C and D will be your output. Output okay. So to the bridge this is your input. So uh, when you connect it to the amplifier this input will go to your output of your amplifier and this output will go as input to your amplifier this is how the circuit arrangement will be drawn okay so you are going to study only this uh, structure of your bridge uh, circuit okay so here your a b will be your input and your c d is going to be your output so in this case these two uh, series capacitor and resistor as well as your parallel capacitor and resistor are called as your frequency arms okay frequency arms and the components of these frequency arms will uh, will decide or uh, yeah will decide the frequency of oscillation okay so when the bridge is balanced you will be getting your sustained oscillation okay so now the phase shift uh, will be always will be equal to zero degree okay the vein bridge, when the bridge is balanced, your phase shift will be equal to 0 degree. That is, the feedback network will give you a phase shift of 0 degree. Now, what is the condition for uh, oscillation? You have to uh, get the total uh, phase shift sh uh, should be 0 degree or 360 degree. So, if your feedback itself is giving 0 degree, then your amplifier should always also give, uh, give you 0 degree, right? So, how is it possible? So, there, there are two possibilities. Either you use your BJT or your FET using two stage amplifier. So you will be using two stage amplifier or using an op amp you can use non inverting amplifier. Okay which will not give 180 degree phase shift. So if you use 
two stage amplifier the first amplifier will be giving you 180 degree the next amplifier will be giving you 180 degree which is a 360 degree which is equal to 0 degree right so this is the one important condition of your main bridge oscillator okay now now this condition is satisfied now what is your second condition the uh, loop gain should be equal to magnitude of your loop gain should be equal to 1 so here this feedback network will have a gain beta is equal to 1 by 3 okay beta is equal to 1 by 3 so what will what is your minimum gain of your a which is required if beta is equal to 1 by 3 a should be at least 3 right because your value should be equal to 1 therefore the magnitude of a b should be greater than or equal to 3 this is one condition for sustained oscillation now the frequency of your oscillation is given by the formula 1 by 2 pi root of c1 c2 into r1 r2 so in, if i take c1 is equal to z2 is equal to c and r1 is equal to r2 is equal to r then I can modify the equation as frequency of oscillation will be given by 2 pi rc, right? So this is your equations of your Wayne bridge oscillator, okay? The next topic what you are going to study is called as your multivibrator. So what is meant by multivibrator? Multivibrator is a device, multivibrator, which is a square wave generator or it is a non sinusoidal oscillator okay so multi vibrator output you will be getting non sinusoidal signal okay so your multi vibrator can be a square wave outputs okay so generally your multi vibrator can be divided into three types one is called as a stable multi vibrator second one is called as Monostable multivibrator, monostable multivibrator, and the third one is called as your bistable multivibrator. Okay, three types. Now, what is meant by a stable multivibrator means you will not have any stable state. That is no stable state. It will be acting as a switch, right? Either it will be on or off. On, off. So, I can tell these are the two states. On will be one state, off will be another state. So, these two states are not stable in the case of a stable. So, I can tell that they are in quasi-stable state. After some time, it switches to the next state, quasi-stable state. Okay, that is called as a stable multivibrator. Whereas, in the case of monostable multivibrator, you will be having one stable state, mono. That means one stable state. So, in this stage uh, or in this case, if your output was high, after some time it switch backs into uh, its stable state. So, this is called as your quasi-stable state and this is called as your stable state. Okay. It will be permanently, it will be there in the stable state until and unless you are going to apply something called as a trigger. So, one trigger will be used here. Once you apply the trigger, it will be going on to your quasi-stable state. Okay. After some time, it will automatically come to its uh, stable state. So, it will be permanently in the stable state until and unless again the trigger is applied. So, it has one, only one stable state. Okay. The other state is called as your quasi-stable state. Now, what happens in your bistable? Bistable will be having two stable state. Okay two stable states so what will be the case of your output in this case so if this is your output both the states will be stable means what so first when you apply the trigger here trigger signal it will be forced to one stable state so it will be in this state permanently until and unless you are going to apply the trigger to another trigger so once the second trigger is applied it will go to its state again so this will be in the permanent state until and unless you are applying again the trigger one so you have it, uh, uh, two triggers applied okay uh, so the two states can be called as your permanent state that is called as bistable or it can be called as your controlled or your triggered stable uh, triggered multivibrator now as per your syllabus you are going to study only one type of a stable multivibrator that is called as single stage 
single stitch a stable oscillator okay single stage a stable oscillator so in the case of single stage a stable multi vibrator or oscillator we are going to use a op amp okay so op amp minus plus the portion of the output is fed back to the input right since it is a positive feedback now you are going to provide a positive feedback signal so i am taking a potential divider biasing r1 r2 so portion of the output will be fed back to the input okay so this will be your v out across the uh, inverting terminal you are going to use a combination of your uh, capacitor and resistor okay so now this is going to be your circuit diagram you will be having v plus v minus same concept as that of the previous oscillator you don't have an input signal applied okay the output signal you are uh, you are getting uh, the plus v sat and minus v sat due to the charging and discharging of your capacitor so let me take the voltage across the capacitor as vc okay so these are the general construction features it is also called as a relaxation oscillator relaxation oscillator oscillator because your oscillator will oscillate between two values that is on v sat and off v minus v sat so plus v sat and minus v sat okay now what is the working principle of this uh, diagram so uh, let me consider two cases okay case 1 and case 2 case 1 you are assuming assuming that the capacitor is initially assume that the capacitor is initially uncharged okay capacitor is uncharged and your v out is equal to v sat okay so let us assume the condition that our v out so this is your graph okay if i give this as your v out so what is your first condition let us assume that your uh, output is at plus v sat now if this output is at first condition output is at plus v sat a portion of the output will be fed back as to the input okay so here what will be your uh, voltage across this this voltage will be applied to your non inverting terminal so if i apply v thevenin's theorem the voltage across this divided by total number of voltages into your input that is your v out so what will be this voltage v thevenin will be equal to v to r2 divided by r1 plus r2 into your instead of v out now the first condition it is v sat so under first condition what will be your feedback signal v th is equal to r2 divided by r1 plus r2 into your v sat right this is your first condition now if i take let us assume that r2 divided by r1 plus r2 is equal to beta now i can write that v thevenin is equal to beta into v sat so the for the first condition now beta into v sat will be the voltage coming across the non inverting terminal okay now what will happen so initially it is uncharged now as soon as you have uh, the voltage here beta into v sat what will happen your output is at v sat now your capacitor will be uh, charging through your r okay so this will be your uh, charging path so what will be your uh, polarity here plus and minus as the capacitor charges the voltage across this node increases okay so as the voltage across this node increases once it reaches now what will be the voltage across the non inverting it will be equal to beta into v sat once it reaches once it is above b uh, beta into v sat the output suddenly switch backs to your minus v sat so let me repeat it once again as the initial condition case 1 the output is at plus v sat once it is at plus v sat the capacitor starts to charge so now let me give this as your capacitor voltage okay <clears throat> vc now once the capacitor starts to charge once it becomes once vc becomes beta into v sat what will happen the output will switch to minus v sat so now the output will switch to minus v sat okay 
So as soon as the output will switch to minus Vsat, it becomes case 2. Now what will happen to case 2? Now output will be changed to minus Vsat. Now what will be your V thevenin? V thevenin will be equal to R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Instead of Vsat, it will become minus Vsat. Now if I take, it will be equal to this as beta, then it will be minus beta into Vsat. Now this voltage is minus beta into Vsat, which will be given to the positive terminal. As it gets positive minus beta into Vsat, what will happen to your output? Output is at minus V set. Now what will be happening to your capacitor? The capacitor starts discharging towards zero. Okay. And once it becomes uh, the value minus, once it becomes more negative than minus beta into V set, what will happen? The uh, output voltage will switch back again to plus V set. So charging, discharging. Once it reaches the plus V set, again the same cycle happens. The capacitor starts to charge. And it goes back to your case 1. Okay. So this is how you are uh, working. You are going to get your square wave output due to the charging and discharging of your capacitor. Single stage at a stable multivibrator. So now your capital T is the complete uh, time period of one cycle. And the time period T is given by 2 RC into ln 1 plus 2 R2 divided by R1. Okay. So the last topic which you are going to see in your uh, last uh, module 1 is your crystal controlled oscillator. Crystal controlled oscillator. Okay. So in this type of oscillator you are going to use a crystal for frequency determination. Okay. So the crystal is given by this is your crystal structure and the equivalent circuit of the crystal consists of uh, series uh, resistor inductor and capacitor with that of a parallel sorry parallel capacitor so this will be your equivalent circuit so r l this is your series capacitor and this is your parallel capacitor okay so here what is the uh, concept behind this is you are going to use a material that is crystal. The popular material which gives high frequency stability is uh, utilized is called as your quartz crystal. So this quartz crystal acts as a frequency determining element. Okay. Element. So only at one resonant frequency, this will give sustained oscillation, okay. So this is the speciality of crystal controlled oscillator. What is one of one more advantage is that it has high frequency stability. High frequency stability. Okay. Now, it works under the principle of piezoelectric effect. So what is meant by this piezoelectric effect? Okay, whenever the a potential um, a difference is applied across the phases of the crystal, the crystal vibrates. Okay, so I can tell that the crystal vibrates whenever the potential difference is applied across the phases. Okay, now this uh, the frequency of the crystal depends mainly on two factors the crystal cut and its size okay and its size so the simple example which is given uh, the diagram which is given uh, is by using your uh, FET okay so this is your source gate and this is your drain okay you have your radio frequency choke which is connected to your supply vdd and you have here is your gate resistor rg okay so to the from the uh, output what is fed your crystal is given as your feedback element to the input of the fit so this is your simple diagram which is given the crystal will give a phase shift of 180 degree your FET will give another phase shift of 180 degree. Okay. 
So there are two range of frequency in which your crystal uh, oscillator um, works. One is the frequency range. So one is your fundamental frequency. That is your basic frequency, fundamental frequency. And the second is your overtone frequency. So what is overtone frequency? It is nothing but your higher frequencies. Okay, so under uh, fundamental frequency, it is in the range of 100 kilohertz to 20 megahertz and overtone frequency is from higher frequency that is 20 megahertz to 100 megahertz okay so in this uh, section only the working principle and waveforms is required that's why we have cut short